Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Welcome to today's Bible study. I am Brother Hosanna David. This is the Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. It is an evangelical ministry, non denominational evangelical ministry. Our aim is preparing people for the return of Jesus Christ, evangelizing the world and preparing the saints for the coming kingdom. Let us pray. Lord our God, we thank you for today that you have given to us free of charge. We appreciate you, Lord. We ask that your spirit will come and teach us the few minutes we are going to spend together. Lord, your word will be richly dished out to us. Help us to be closer to you even as we run this race through your grace. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Before we continue, in case you have not subscribed, please subscribe to this channel, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations, and follow us across our social media platforms. Today we want to talk about God's grace. What is God's grace? One of the most abused words in the Bible is grace. What is grace? A lot of people have taken grace as a license to sin, while others are seen grace as the power of God that has been manifested to mankind to deliver them from the path of destruction and translate them into the path of life. So what is grace? This is what we want to talk about today. Next week, we are going to build on this topic, God's grace. Let's read Romans 5, 19, 20, and 21. For as by one man's disobedience, Many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. 21. That as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So what is grace? What exactly is grace? God's grace is the goodwill, loving kindness, favor, merciful kindness by which God exerting his holy influence upon souls turns them to Christ. Not just turning them to Christ, keeps, strengthens, increases them in Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles them to the exercise of the Christian virtues. So grace is just more than unmerited favor. Grace is a complete word. Grace is, is a word that contains a whole process. Grace, the grace of God, is goodwill, loving kindness, favor, merciful kindness by which God exerting his holy influence upon souls, turns them to Christ, not just turning them to Christ, keeps them, strengthens them, increases them in Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindles them to the exercise of the Christian virtue. So grace does not stop at saving us, at granting us pardon of our sins, and declaring us righteous, which is justification. But grace also continues the work of justification until sanctification. So grace also contains the power that leads us, protects us, drives us through the process of sanctification. So until sanctification is achieved, the work of grace is not finished. Grace is not just about um, having unmerited favor from God, but it also means divine strength that we receive from God that enables us to do the things that we wouldn't have been able to do ordinarily. For instance, Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. 
through Christ who strengthened me. What is that? That is grace. The power of God comes to us through grace a lot of times. We know the Spirit of God strengthens us. Grace is the lubricant by which we navigate through hard times. Grace, the grace of God upon our lives enables us to survive hard times. It is the step down, the inbuilt step down that we have in ourselves to the point that even when everything around us is burning and hurting us and people are seeing us that, oh, this brother is dying, this brother is dying. They are stoning him. They are persecuting him. But because you have the grace inside of you, you have the grace of God inside of you, you are strengthened. You have strength to overcome. Look at Stephen. They were stoning him to death. But because he had the grace of God, he wasn't feeling the pain. This is beyond humanity. This is beyond human capability. They were stoning him and he was praying for them. This is what grace can do. Sometimes when we uh, are asked about some situations, we say, well, by God's grace, I believe I'm able to do it. We are not referring to that unmerited favor alone. We are talking about the divine strength that we get from God that enables us to accomplish divine and even physical purposes, divine assignments, physical assignments. That is God's grace. Grace is provided to us as the long suffering of God towards us while he awaits us to grow into Christian maturity. That means when the process of grace is ongoing, Teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly loss, according to Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Why that process is going on, there is a form of grace that exists towards us as long suffering, as patience, as God's long suffering and patience towards us. Romans 2, verse 4 says, All despise it. Thou the wishes of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. That means when God is pulling us through his divine power. Remember what Jesus Christ said No one comes to me except the Father draws him. God's grace has to draw you first. There are some who think that, oh, it was me who made up my mind to actually give my life to Christ. At first, God had to, the heart of man is so, is, is so wicked, is desperately wicked. So for you to even listen to God's word, the work of grace has already started working in you. The grace of God is actually what, first of all, directs the word of God to you. And also, directs your heart to receive God's word. But where a lot of people have problem is that they resist the word of God. Remember God's word. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Some people, they harden their hearts. Even when God is drawing them, when God is pulling them through the power of grace, they harden their heart. Grace is what actually opens our hearts. And makes our hearts fertile for the word of God. If the grace of God is never involved, the word of God will fall on deaf ears. That is it. And the grace of God continues that same work by bearing with us. So it is, it is this God's grace that actually draws us and begins the work of our salvation, even before we are aware. Just like the Ethiopian eunuch. He was just reading the book of Isaiah. And then God prompted his son's servant, go to him. Go that way. And he went and joined him. 
the work of salvation actually started before he even knew it. Even when he entered the chariot to meet him, he was not aware that it was the day of his salvation. This is the work of grace. Grace is amazing. Just as the song says, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That is how grace is. Grace is powerful. The grace of God does not just call us, does not just transform us, but the grace of God is, appears at the process, at the time of transformation, at the time of our uh, sanctification, as God's patience, forbearance. So if God's grace does not contain patience, long-suffering, it means it's not complete. Because the day you come to Christ, the day the grace of God draws you and saves you, it's not the day your habits that are bad are going to go. It is not that same day your pride is going to vanish. It's not that same moment your addiction is going to vanish. Although if, you are, if your addiction is as a result of uh, an evil spirit, it could vanish that same moment when the spirit leaves you. That means the power that is holding you in captivity is gone, so you will become free. And there are some addictions that will disappear immediately. But I tell you, your bad character is not going to disappear immediately. Newly born Christians, a lot of times, especially when they receive the Holy Spirit, they see themselves as perfect as people who have been accepted by God. And because of that, because God is using them, they don't see any need to work on themselves. No, the grace of God is still there to see you through the process of your sanctification. Your being set apart, your purification, and also causing you to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit to produce Christian virtues. The process of that transformation of being born again by the word of God, as you hear the word of God, the double-edged sword pierces, pierces through your heart and your heart is pricked from time to time. Even when you're born again, you still hear so many messages and you see your spiritual poverty and you cry, you repent and you continue to climb and climb and climb higher, higher, higher until you get to the point of perfection in Christ. The grace of God is also available to see you through that same process. When you get born again, the grace of God is there for you to help you overcome your bad habits, your pride, your lies, your life of vanity. The grace of God will always be there to see you through. Look at Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all that, blessed are all they that wait for him. It is the grace of God that makes God to be patient with us. Because until God's grace produces God's patience practically towards us. Then the work of grace is not complete. Second Peter chapter 3, 14 and 15. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. God produces long suffering, a lot of patience, so that our, the work of salvation can be completed in our lives. God is not rash, God is simple, is patient, but principled. 
I did one teaching which I posted on my yeah, YouTube channel, Hosanna E.E. E. David. I talked about God's, that God is simple and principled. These two things are perfect in God. They are perfected in God. If you look at the Bible, his simplicity, the psalmist says, Who is man that thou art mindful of him, the son of man, that you even think about him? Look at how big God is. But he's still mindful of us. Even though we are like the, the grasses of the field, like the flowers that fade away, God still think about us. That is one side of God. God is simple, like a giant, coming down to the level of a toddler, a little baby. And he's able to bring out that caring part of himself, even though he has all strength and all powers. So when God sees us, in our weaknesses, God, when we get admitted into Christ, sees us as babes. We could be a hundred years old, but so long as we are new in Christ, we are babes. And he deals with us like children in kindergarten. For instance, me that is a teacher, there are some things that I will do and God will punish me for it. In fact, there are things that God told me. If you do these things, you have no explanation. No explanation. And I say it, even last week I was telling someone that if I fall into this kind of sin, I don't have any excuse to present before God. Because I have known so much. I have gone too far. There are things that God does not even expect me to do. Because I have grown. But... I didn't get this kind of strict commands, this level of strictness. Some 20 years ago, it wasn't like that. So God deals with us according to our classes and according to our knowledge and according to our maturity in Christ. So when you read Romans chapter 6 verse 1, telling us that shall we continue in sin that grace may abound. It is saying that, okay, you were babes, and now you have grown. So even though the grace of God appears to you as long-suffering, patience, so that you can graduate with time, as you continue to build in your faith so that you can graduate with time, are you going to continue in sin? That the grace of God that pours out for you even more abundantly whenever sin abounded, are you going to continue in that sin so that grace can continue to overflow? The answer is God forbid. This is where a lot of people get it wrong. That, oh, if I sin and God forgives me, that means God's forgiveness is always there. Why not I continue to sin? After all, I don't pay for the forgiveness. I just need to tell God I'm sorry and then he forgives me. Imagine a situation because you are a child and your mom keeps washing you anytime you rub yourself in the mud. And if you stain only your legs, she washes your legs. And when you stain your body up to maybe your chest region, she uses one full bucket, higher water, more water to wash you. And because of that, you feel you can just put your hair into the mud because there is water and because your mom is ever willing to wash you. No. The answer is, shall we continue to go to the mud, go to our vomit, because 
someone is ready to wash us clean. Why don't you spare him the stress and the resources of always washing you? That washing is there because you can't be disowned because you are unclean. Actually, you can't be disowned. Your parents are not going to disown you because you soil yourself up. But by the time you grow into adulthood and you soil yourself up and you even refuse to be washed, then your parents are going to tell you, you are on your own. That's the truth. Because you are of age. So God washes us through his grace, whenever we sin, whenever we fall. But he expects us to grow into Christian maturity. That is why God disciplines us according to our age, our, our Christian age, our spiritual age. He disciplines us. So as believers, we don't need to continue in sin so that grace will continue to abound. The last scripture I want us to read is Titus chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So this is a work of grace. In the next Bible study, we are going to talk about the work of grace. The work of grace is not actually just to pardon us, but the work of grace continues from here. I want to round up in this place, and next time we are going to continue from here. Are you a believer? The grace of God is able to see you through. He did not save us to abandon us. So the grace of God leads us to eternal life. The grace of God is salvation. It leads us to salvation. Look at the uh, Second Peter uh, 3, 14 and 15 we read. The last part of it says, and account that the long suffering of our God is salvation. Yes, the long suffering of our God is for our salvation. The grace of God is for our salvation. It is not primarily for us to build houses, to live a good life, and not make heaven. No. It is primarily for us to attain eternal life. If you are not a Christian, please, this is the time to give your life to Christ. There is a revelation I got from the Lord. Um, when was that? I think about three days ago. The Lord was telling me, go and warn them. I saw an iron door. These two doors you open and open into both sides, sideways like this. You open it like this. I saw an iron door. Thick door, it was open like that. And the other side of it was full of tribulations. And the Lord told me, warn mankind to prepare that we are entering the toughest side of life, where things are going to be rough, where the very things spoken of in the Bible are going to come to pass. We are entering that side, the other side of life, where men's hearts will fail them. That is where we are entering now. There is another message God gave me, I think about, was it January or thereabouts, that people are going to die. I posted the, the message on eagleeyeopener.com, that people are going to die. People will die anyhow. I've seen it again, that people are going to die. Especially some of those who have received these injections, multiple of them, 
that many people are going to die. I don't know how to deliver that message, but I will try as much as possible to put a short part of it online, on YouTube and Facebook because of censorship, and put the complete message on Rumble and Telegram. I'm on Telegram now at Eagle Ayopuna. Rumble at Eagle Ayopuna. So you can subscribe to these two channels, Eagle Ayopuna. This is a time to get prepared. It could be anybody's turn to leave. I'm not telling you people are going to die because I want to frighten you, but because I want you to call yourself to order and reconcile with God. Now, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I want to pray with you. Or you want to strengthen your relationship with God, let us pray. O oh Lord God, you are the God of mercy and truth. Grace and truth came through Jesus. Lord, thank you for coming to die for us. Jesus, thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for bringing grace to us. O oh Lord our God, we ask that you release your power and your spirit, even this moment, touch your children, as many you have been marked out for salvation, forgive their sins. Accept them, even as they lift up their hearts to you and cry to you that you forgive all their sins. Lord, may you forgive in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we know that what is coming ahead is terrible. After life, is going to be very, very terrible for as many that do not receive you. Lord, therefore, we ask that you stretch your hand of grace towards these, your children. Call them to yourself. Forgive their sins and wash them with the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. May it be well with you. Be strengthened. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please. Take your Christian life very, very seriously. The days are evil. This is a time of preparation. Please prepare. And I want you to subscribe to this channel in case you have not subscribed. Also do well to subscribe to Eagle Ayupuna. We want to resume Bible study very, very soon. If you want to be a part of this Bible study, click the link in the description box. There is a WhatsApp link. It is a link of the Bible study group so that you can be updated and know exactly when we want to do the Bible study. It is going to be through Zoom and it's going to be streamed live. So please, all necessary information will be passed across to you, even as you join the group to get yourself updated. We are going to continue with this Bible study and I want to sincerely appreciate as many that have been supporting this ministry. May the Lord God Almighty bless you and continue to replenish you in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. Follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, and on LinkedIn. If you want to reach me, uh, my contact details are on the screen. God bless you.